Hello everyone, it's Jerry Caudell, the Yankee Creek Stitcher. I am back for floss suit number 25. It is Friday, April 26th of 2019. I have lots of new starts to show you. Um, that's all I've worked on this week. Um, we went and seen uh, Newsies last week at Derby Dinner. Fabulous production, highly recommend it. There's still a couple weeks left, so if you're around and about the area, go check it out. It's really great. So, of course, I have another week of new starts to share with you this week. I don't have any purchases to share with you, so we're going to get right into my new starts. And I still have, I think, six left, mm, five left after today. Um, still some good ones coming up. <laughs> so, let's start with the chart that I showed you last Friday that I had spun to start that day. <clears throat> it is the Prairie Schooler Autumn Samplers, and I am going to start with this one here with the little squirrels and the leaves. <clears throat> I am stitching this on 36 count Vintage Country Mocha, and I started yeah, at the bottom, totally different from where I normally start. I've started down at the bottom, just in that bottom corner. And going up because I think no I have plenty of room down here I don't know if this is all done in DMC that was my progress and I only stitched on that an hour so we had a busy Friday so that's what we've got so far okay and the next day I spun, oh yes, um, Plum Street Samplers Cinnamon Stars. I have loved this chart and I guess other things has just, has just bumped it back. So I was excited to get this one on my wheel and spun it the other, the other day. I've seen so many people stitch this. I just love those colors. Obviously, you can tell I love autumn. So this was perfect. I was so excited to spin it. Everything, hold on. Everything sliding off my lap today. Um, <clears throat> I was able to stitch on this for about an hour and a half. Oops. I'm stitching this on... Uh, oh, this is 36 count macchiato from Luminous Fiber Arts, Misty Purcell. Love her linens. I have started stitching the, the fence that runs across the entire length at the bottom. And I want to stitch it all in the called for colors because they're just beautiful the way they are. However, I did not have the call for color for the fence. And I had one that was, you know, pretty pretty well equivalent to it. So I started using that until I get the other colors. And what I'm using is the General Art. It was their limited edition. So I don't know the color name, but it's a beautiful variegated, just a light brown, light gray. So it looks like a beautiful worn fence. Get the floss out of the way. There we go. So like I said, I stitched on this one in about an hour and a half. So pretty. I love the linen. I think it's gonna look great on this, on this fabric. So that was day number 20. Okay, day 21. Ah, oh, yes, I love this one too. So many I spun this week. I'm like, oh my yes, I love it, I love it, I love it. This was, <clears throat> it's by Stitching Pretty Remembering Bygone Stitches. Apparently, the lady that designed for Python Stitches, I guess, passed. And 
um, they uh, printed this in remembrance of her. So it's Stitching Pretty released it uh, with permission of Bygone Stitches. And oh my goodness, the picture doesn't do it justice, but I just love the Quaker motifs and of course love the colors, the oranges and the browns, oh my goodness. And I'm going to use the called for floss. I already had two of them in a stash. Two of the colors. It calls for cin uh, general, all three general arts, cinnamon, pumpkin patch, and burnt orange. I had the burnt orange and the cinnamon. And I'm stitching this on 40 count Harvest Moon from Luminous Fiber Arts. I stitched a lot of stuff on her fabric, this, on her linen this week. But these um, are the two flosses that I had in my stash. And this was my start. But it's going to look so good on this fabric. Those colors. So that's burnt orange and cinnamon. And... I started, yeah, in the upper right corner. But as you're stitching it, you just don't see how really pretty that is until like the next day or two, you just look at it and you're like, oh wow, that is so pretty. <laughs> when you're just looking at it instead of concentrating on your where the little squares are that you need to stitch. But it is, I just love it. It's gorgeous. Perfect colors. Okay. And I'll tell you what, with all these starts I'm doing, I pulled several flosses and I was going to put them back in my floss stash each day so I could continue using it. But I haven't, so I need to go through and re inventory my flosses. Okay, so day 22, I spun this chart. I've been wanting to start it for a while. And it is Little House Needleworks, uh, Early Americans, the Early American series. I have all the charts, one through nine. And of course, I'm gonna start with chart number one, Betsy Ross. And I believe they were stitched on Confederate Gray. I'm not sure. I think it was. But anyway, I wanted like a gray or gray blue fabric to stitch this on. And, oh, and I'm using um, Vonna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher. She designed a um, border that goes around, I'm laying it out three, the three by three square. She designed a border to go through that, go around that. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen it. This is the printed out chart. It is free on her blog, blog spot. It's the twisted, the twisted stitcher blocks, the twisted stitcher dot blogspot dot com maybe. But if you just put in the twister, twisted stitcher blog spot, it will come up. But it's free. And she all she asks is that you give her credit for that. So it is a beautiful design, Vana, and several people have stitched that. If you look under the um, hashtag on Instagram, um, you'll see people that have stitched it. It is quite lovely. So the fabric I'm stitching this on is 30, I think it's 36 count. Yeah, 36 counts, 36 count, picture this plus pewter. It's a beautiful mottled gray. I stitched two hours on it and I got, this goes about two uh, lengths past the square. I went ahead and just finished out my thread link to get that. So I haven't started on the actual block yet but I am going to stitch her border, which I think is just beautiful on there. It, um, oh, the flosses I used 
are all the Victorian mottos. I got in the thread pack uh, a few weeks ago, the, Amer the Primitive American pack that she had. I have a random green floss in there. Don't know where that come from. But the blue I'm using for the border is prim, a prim flag blue. That's for the border. And the other blue I'm going to use inside the blocks because like her dress is this blue and um, there's some other charts that uses the same blue. And I wanted a more faded blue for that, especially for her dress and just the little details like that. This is Color and Cotton's Prussian Blue. So I think that's going to make the beautiful little details in there because I really want the faded out look. So I thought that was a beautiful blue. It, and it really complements the Prim Flag Blue as well. So I think it'll, it'll work out well. And the red... The red I'm using for the border, and I think I'm using it for all of the call for red in the chart, I think. Yeah. It calls for used brick, and I am using the new flag red and it, it has ever so subtle, um, you know, a nice flag red, but then goes a little bit dark. So it has some nice variegation in it. So right now I'm at least using that for the border. I thought I might find maybe a little more faded red for the blocks, but if not, I think that'll work for all of it because it works well with the Prussian blue as well. So the red will just really pop on there. And the gold for the gold star that I'm using up here is Victorian Mottos, um, Amber Waves of Grain. It's just a beautiful, beautiful gold for the stars. So I won't need much of it. And the white that I'll be using, because I'm hoping it will stand out. This, like I said, this is 40, uh, 36 count. So I think for the stars that go down the border, just to make them pop really well, since it's kind of a lighter fabric, I'll use two, two over two instead of one over two. But I'm using a uh, Glory Stars, and that was also in uh, the floss pack from Victorian Motto. So that's the white. It is ever so slightly variegated into just a tinge, just a very, very light tinge of blue in spots. So so I was excited to finally spin this chart because it's been in my stash for a while and I wanted to get the perfect fabric. And of course, the perfect blues and reds for it. Okay, so that was day 22. And like I said, I did stitch on that for a couple of hours. Now I have a couple of <laughs> random threads. I've got to stick this one back in here. Definitely have to stay organized with all these starts. So, day 23 is another prairie schooler. And it is the uh, village green. Love these little chickens. Oh my goodness. I am going to stitch all three of these. And I'm starting on, on this one. And I thought about doing one piece, but... I, I like how they framed each one individually and then stacked them together. So that is what I decided to, to do. I am stitching. 
it on the same fabric. And the fabric that I chose is a 36 count. Uh, it was the color and cotton limited edition that they uh, included in their cozy Christmas collection that they sent out in December. It is a beautiful modeled kind of a gold brown. It is, I think, perfect for this for this uh, three part series. So I love, love, love the modeling in that. And I think it's, like I said, it's just gonna be beautiful with these charts. So this is my progress so far. I did stitch a couple hours on it. I'm using the called for DMCs, of course. Um, the, and one of them that I'm using for the kind of like trellis that runs around the border, that's where I started. It is almost the same color as the fabric. But I think, oh, my hair is driving me crazy today. I think um, once I get the green winding through it a little bit more, it's gonna help it stand out a bit. Cause it's really, really similar and I just do not feel like <laughs> trying to pick out something different, but I think it'll be okay. But, oh, just look at that modeling. I love it. Just gorgeous. I think it's just gonna be so pretty with, with those scenes that these are gonna be stitched on. And the top one with the chicken, oh, let me show you the chart with the chickens here. I, I, I don't see a need to stitch all of these. So it's just going to be the hen and the rooster and maybe just one width of the chicks there. But I just love that rooster and hen. I think they're just gorgeous. And I even thought of stitching that just the hen and rooster um, and making it into a small for one of the exchanges that I'll be going to because they're pretty much the right size for that. I'm about to shave my head because <laughs> my hair has gotten on my nerves all day. I apologize. I know that frustrates some people, but uh, it is what it is. It's definitely frustrating me today. Okay, so day 24, I spun another Plum Street. And I've seen a lot of people stitch this one as well. It is Henpeck. I wanted to get some Americana stuff in here, here too. I know I've done a lot of fall and autumn but I love the chickens on this. And then of course with the red, white, and blue, I thought, yeah, I got to add that to my, to my mania start. So I am stitching this on 36 count macchiato from Luminous Fiber Arts. And these are a lot smaller than I thought they were going to be, but I love it. I stitched one and a quarter hours on this. This is my progress so far. And I'm trying to use as much as the called for as I can, because I think they're really pretty. Um, it called for, I believe used brick. No, no, I think it was cherry cobbler. No, it called for used brick on this one for the red. And I didn't have used brick, but I have old red paint. And it is amazing the different in the colors of the same color. I know a lot of people have commented on that because I mean one it's I mean it could be called a different color um so I felt like this little bit darker red was better was better for the for this chart. So I'm using old red paint for my red. I'm using color and cottons lapis for the blue and the green grass, I am using Color and Cotton's Christmas tree. Oh my goodness. Sorry guys. I wanted some variegation in that because it's a pretty big portion of the chart. So it is a beautiful green. 
I think it's a beautiful spring grass green. Um, and then I've, I'm doing the border in coal, which it calls for. And the white that I'm using for the top chicken is, uh, I'm just going to use uh, Weak Style Works Grits. So it calls for parchment to use for that chicken on the top. And my parchment, and I don't, you know, I don't know if it's, they're all like that, but the, the skein that I have of parchment, it's really yellow. So I wanted it to definitely be more white. So I changed that to grits. Okay. And yesterday, day 25, I spun one of the kits that I have. It is the dimensions kit. Um, the design or drawing I don't know, Charles Wysocki. It is antique shops. And of course, it's the fall, a fall setting, but it has uh, Cafe Liberty antiques and quilts. I just love it. I think it's so cute. And it looks really I don't know. I just had in my head that it's like really big. Um, but I don't think it's going to be too bad. Of course, as I said, it comes in a kit. So I already had all the floss. So pretty. I love seeing them on their floss holders like that. Um, it did come with 14 count Ada. Um, I don't really care to stitch on 14 count Ada. I don't mind 18 count Ada. Um, that way I could bump down to two strands of floss to stitch with. And it uses more of a white or an off-white. And I had some 18 count Ada that I had tea and coffee dyed. So I decided to go ahead and use that. And I wasn't sure where I wanted to start. Um, with this, there's really no fun, like, I like a good defined corner to start in and that didn't have anything but right there in the middle is these beautiful orange trees so yes i will start with orange that would be great so that's my progress it's a couple trees over and it's the dark orange that's in the kit so the empty spaces here is the lighter orange which of course will give it some shading effect And sometimes I do um, stitch uh, using the sewing method on Ada, but I wasn't really happy with my stitches um, using the sewing method. So I am doing the poke and stab on this one, which it's it actually went a lot faster than I thought it was going to, thankfully. Okay, and that brings me to what I spent today, and oh my goodness, I love it, and I didn't think it was ever going to come up on my wheel. I thought, you know what, this is probably the my most favorite chart that I have in all my starts, and that my luck's going to be, it's not going to spin until the last day, <laughs> but it's fun, and I was so super excited. This pattern comes from Just Cross Stitch Magazine from February of this year, February of 2019. It is called Watercolor Garden. It is from Stitchy Fish, Stitchy Fish Designs. Look at that gorgeous sunflower. Oh, I just love it. Look at, because on the very tips, there's purples and teal blues. Oh, and just that beautiful middle section. I've got all the DMC for it. And as I was moving the stuff over here, all my DMC floss for this fell on the floor. And I thought, eh, <laughs> I'll show it to them next week when I show them my progress on this. But I was so excited to spin this. It is gorgeous. I love it. I can't wait to get it done. I'm probably going to do it as a pillow. Maybe. I'm just afraid to use it because, you know, it's, um, it'll be about that size of a pillow. I'm afraid, you know, if you sit that in a, on a chair or something, it's welcoming people to like, pit, you know, use it to 
lay something on or something. <laughs> like, no, don't touch it. So, I don't know. I may frame it. But I am stitching this on a 28 count even weave and I'm just using the bright white that it came in because I want those colors to pop and they definitely will because they are they're just gorgeous just the pinks and the purples and teals and the reds and the oranges they are oh oh well here here's a few that didn't fall <laughs> you know you got magentas and reds all colors all the rainbow of purples Ugh. So I haven't stitched on it at all yet today. So I am super excited to do that. I think my husband and I are going to go out to dinner. So I might get an hour, an hour before we go and hopefully an hour when we get home. If not, I'll stitch on it a little bit in the morning before I start my new start for tomorrow. So I cannot, cannot wait. It's, it's pretty confetti after I looked at the chart. Um, so let's, let's see how that goes. I really hate, I really hate confetti stitching because it's like, I like doing a big group of, of a color, you know, so you don't have to keep changing colors. It's not too bad. I think what will keep me motivated on it is the colors because I just love the colors there. You know, uh, I've been stitching a lot of, fall and autumn and um, red, white, and blue. But as you can see from my summer room, I like bright colors in my studio. So um, it's nice to work on something a little bit different. So it's, it's really going to captivate me and I think keep my attention to uh, keep, keep up with it. Not just since it's the confetti, kind of push it to the side. So that's what I have going on. I did have, since I had initially planned on uh, doing all this in May, which of course has 31 days. So I do have 31 charts and of course April only has 30 days. So my last chart I'm going to use, of course, on May 1st. So it'll be an official mania, <laughs> an official mania start. Um, and I have a chart that I'm, I'm stitching for um, a really good friend, her wedding is June 15th. So I have to get concentrating, concentrated on that in May. So any time I have, you know, time to free stitch or, you know, cause I can work on a, a chart for a few days and it's like, okay, I need to change something. So I'm just going to refresh my, uh, wheel that I've used. It already has all the charts in there. I'm just going to say, okay, let's do this one again. And so when I have a free day, or, you know, just want to change it up a little bit, just spin from that. That way all the whips that, I, um, or all my starts that I've had for this month, whatever it spins, hopefully the watercolor garden <laughs> will come up frequently. Um, so that's what I plan on doing in May. I have been watching everyone's videos that's sharing their mania plans. I love watching all their mania plans because, you know, everybody does a little bit something different, which is great. So... Uh, I think that's all I have to share with you. I've just been stitching, 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 and I love it. It's, I just love it. Um, I'm looking, already looking forward to July and having all kinds of Christmas stitch. I don't know if, how many new starts I'll have for Christmas because I started quite a few last year. Um, so I'll probably have a, a few new ones in July, but then I have, because I couldn't, didn't realize how many Christmas whips I already have going on, so... I need to get some Christmas cross stitches out there. Okay, so that's further in the future. So that's all I have for you today. I hope everyone has an awesome weekend. It's going to be pretty nice here tomorrow. Kind of cool Sunday. So we're going to be working out in the yard. Like the weeds are going like crazy. So <laughs> we're going to work a little bit outside. And that's what we have going on. I hope everyone has a great weekend. And I will see you next week with another update.